And right. if you see two weeks of behavior that you know is not life giving, mm -hmm. then get some help. Right. And you know, and that leads into your second book and I, I've got to get a copy so I can have them here. And I don't know, maybe I can get some at the conference if people want to pick them up. I don't know. how. Well. I would love to make those available. Absolutely. Because okay. I'll keep, keep a good accounting of it and whatever, but I, I would love to have them available for the women. And I know that you, you would love to be here, but you're vacationing with your yes. grandchildren. So, yes. I said, you know, thank God for, for Zoom. We can have you there and not really be there. But exactly. uh, talk about this journal that you have, because we've got to get a copy of it. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's a 40 day devotional. Okay. Uh, my first book is Learning to Be. Yes. That yes. chronicles my experience with major depression and mm -hmm. learning to live with a mental health diagnosis. Uh, I got to say something else about that. The yeah. reason I keep insisting on using the phrase learning to live with a mental health diagnosis is because most of us don't recognize, number one, we can. Mm -hmm. We can live with it. Yeah, we live different. And, and look exactly. beautiful. Exactly. I have done more <laughs> since I've gotten the diagnosis now that I'm understanding how I have to care for myself, right? Mm -hmm. I've gone, uh, week, two weeks ago, I went scuba, excuse me, snorkeling uh, in Aruba. I've wow. gone skydiving. I've gone parasailing because I learned some things about Juanita. Well, mm -hmm. Juanita needs intentional fun. Juanita needs intentional adventure. I've gone mountain climbing. I've climbed 14,000 feet mountains, all right? Um, I did not know that I needed that kind of stuff until I crashed. Right, and right. I ask myself, what do, do you, I need? What do you need? And you needed right. that. And your body was crying for it. And, and exactly. Not, not tears, but it's saying, Juanita, this That's is you. Right. you find something. You need to jump out of something. You need some excitement. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you need some excitement. Exactly. You, need some, you need to get a life, girl. Let's <laughs> mom on somebody. All right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right. Wow. So wow. Absolutely right. So what might you find out about yourself that you have not been living into? Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. give and graces? What what is it uniquely about you? When I before I went skydiving, the Holy Spirit said, "Juanita, go skydiving." Mm -hmm. And I'm like, "What? Me? Who are you talking to? Really? <laughs> it was something I'd always wanted to do. Wanted to do. But yeah. as a child, I was taught, "Why you want to do some you know, stuff like that?" Black folks gonna be jumping out no plane. <laughs> hey, girl, I heard that. All right. I'm so what do you do? Me. Now you know. After, black folks are that's exactly right. And so when you hear that from respected authorities right. in your life, right, you shut it down. You shut you it say, down. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. I guess we don't do that. We don't do that. But the I Holy Spirit that. said, go skydiving. Yeah. And, and when your body I did, wants to do it. Yeah, exactly. you correct it. <laughs> exactly. And so recognize yeah. the you you're created to be. Yeah. Not the you, you your need. people say you ought to be. Right. Your what husband you or your partner says mm -hmm. you should be. Your children say you ought to be, right? Who is the you God has created you to be? What learning to be is about yeah. is living your most expansive and authentic life. Because in that life, you'll find joy with or without a mental health diagnosis. Too. Yeah. All so right. that tells, I mean, if you want to hear the whole story, everything is in there and all a whole bunch. It was, it's a wonderful book. And um, so we we definitely need that. But OK, let's talk about your journal, your new book. All now. right. All right. So this is the 40 day devotional. It's 40 mm -hmm. days on being a one. Okay. And basically it's 40 days of reflection. So as an example, I'm going to read you a little bit of one of them. Um, okay. Who died and made ones the judge. All right. Matthew 7 and 1 says, do not judge or you too will be judged. Matthew 7, 1 through 5 is Jesus's treatise on condemnation, on mm -hmm. estimating and sizing people up. And it's really clear that Jesus says, that's not a way to live. Mm -hmm. It says, what I'm learning is that condemnation, criticism and judgment have an energy frequency composed of feelings as far reaching as fear and hatred and scorn, which are not life-giving feelings to carry around. When I live in judgment, instead of paying attention to the truth, something in me dies. Mm -hmm. Judgment is like sentencing something or too often someone to a death that they don't deserve. More honestly, what dies is my capacity for compassion. 
for myself and ultimately compassion for others. And then I write a little more. And then at the end of it, I invite you to do a pause to reflect. So I invite you to read aloud Matthew 7, 1 through 5 and make it personal. Mm -hmm. I do not judge. Mm -hmm. I too will be judged. Mm -hmm. What do you notice as you write out that scripture and you affirm, I will not judge? Mm -hmm. How do you feel after reading the text out loud? Now rewrite the passage in the affirmative. What can I say to my neighbor instead of, let me take the speck out of your eye? Mm. <laughs> what do you notice how do you feel after rewriting the text and then I say return to the text and reflect on it again before you go to bed notice what you notice, notice. and take notes wow. so I invite you to step into just a reflection mm -hmm. there's usually some scripture relative to it and then I invite you to sit with it and mm -hmm. ask yourself questions because again matter of fact I said for 30 days would not make it 40 Oh my 40 God. days. Yeah. Make a note of how you're responding to things, how you're seeing the world. Are you constantly speaking uh, catastrophe over everything? Is right. everything doom and gloom? Is everything falling apart? You know, um, who was that chicken little that ran around oh saying the God. sky is falling, the sky is falling. <laughs> when you find yourself operating as a pessimist, and that's not normally who you are, then begin to notice what you're noticing. And so both of these, this one is about my experience with depression and what I learned and some spiritual practices that I invite people to engage in. You know, doctor, see, I'm, now I'm giving you a doctorate, Dr. O. Well, I do have a doctorate though. Oh, congratulations. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, good I've had my right? doctorate for now about seven or eight years. Praise God. And isn't uh, it? Yeah, by the mercies of God. Yeah, for me. So I, I well, do, I don't use it that much, but I, I've got it. <laughs> good. Well, I tell you, you are using it because it's that doctorate that's helping you to realize this kind of information is necessary for the for our congregations and for the circles of influence that we're involved in. So thank you for what you're doing. Yeah. Well, listen, I want to, before we close out, I know you have some techniques that you use and you've shared them with me and they're very beneficial. So I'd like to close out this time together with you maybe taking us through that breathing exercise. I'd be happy to. And saying a prayer for us just to kind of send us on our way. Because what you are saying through your books, you are speaking something very, very important. And you've taught us how to speak to ourselves uh, through affirmations and through the, yes. the journaling so that we can be better and also to speak to counselors. Uh, so now we need to learn how to settle ourselves to listen. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when you get ready to speak, you need to listen and take in some things sometimes so that when you open your mouth, what you come comes out is something that's very productive, not only for yourself, but for your family and friends and your career and just the whole part of who God has called you to be so that you Thank can you. live your best life. So I'm going to let you close it out. And if you'll just lead us in that breathing technique and sure. give us a little quick, short prayer, we would be so glad. All right. I'm going to do a two-part breathing and then I'll do the prayer. And so what I invite you to do is sit up tall and straight in your seat. And if you're able to put your feet flat on the floor, turn your hands palm side up and rest them in your, on your thighs. Or as grandma used to say, put them on your lap, right? Yeah. And so I invite you to breathe in through your nose and then breathe out through your mouth like you're blowing through a straw. So in through your nose and out through your mouth. And if you're in a safe place, I invite you to close your eyes and just breathe in, noticing the cool air coming into your nostrils. And on the exhale, notice the warm air exiting your mouth. Be with your breath, noticing the cool air coming into your nose. And exhaling through your mouth. And as we continue to breathe, notice what you're noticing in your body as you're breathing this way. Breathing in deeply and fully. And exhaling through your mouth. Breathing in God's light and love. 
and exhale all of your cares, your anxieties, just let them go. Breathing in, noticing that cool air coming into your nostrils. And when you exhale, squeeze your navel towards your spine, letting out all the carbon dioxide. Breathing in, bringing that breath down into your belly like you're blowing up a balloon in your tummy. Breathing in. And exhaling, squeezing your navel towards your spine. Breathing in deeply and fully. Exhaling deeply and slowly. As you continue to breathe, I'd like to pray a blessing over you. Good and gracious God, as we breathe in, we breathe in the reminder that you are God breathing in us. That there is no separation or distance between us. That you, God, are our inhale and you, God, are our exhale. And so, God, as we breathe in, we ask that you would refine within us the ability to notice what we're noticing. To notice places where we're discontented. And that we would be wise to take the actions needed to dissolve the discontent. As we breathe in deeply and fully and exhale deeply and slowly. We ask God that you would help us to be attuned, to notice what we're noticing about our longing, the things we would really love in our life, the things we really want in our life. Helping us to be mindful that you said that you would give us the desires of our hearts when we keep our mind stayed on you. And so we breathe in the awareness that the things we're hoping for and longing for are often your spirit inviting us to live our most expansive lives. So Lord, as we prepare to leave this session, but not the conference, we ask that you would continue to help us to be aware, to notice what we're noticing and then to take the next right step for our own well-being. We bless you, God, and we thank you. In the matchless name of Jesus, amen. amen. Now, what I'd like you to do is the second part of this, and it'll be quick. Take your thumb finger on your right hand, put it up against your ring finger, and you're going to breathe in through your left nostril. Hold the breath. Then bring that finger over to the right nostril, close it and exhale. And what we're doing is we're exhaling anger. So let's breathe in. And now exhale the anger. The last thing that made you mad, exhale. All right, breathe in. Now exhale, what made you mad? And notice as you breathe, on the right side, if there's any clearing there. The second thing, you take your left hand, thumb against the base of the ring finger, close off your left nostril, take a breath. And now we're gonna exhale our attachments, the things we think we need to control. So exhale, something you need to control, your partner, your children, your job, exhale. Thinking about that thing you've been thinking you need to control. Let's do it a second time. Breathe in. Now think about what it is you want to let go of. A third and final time. Breathe in. And let go of what you have been holding on way too long. Now the last part. Hands in your lap. And we're going to breathe in. 
God's light and love and exhale all chaos, confusion, and self-doubt. Breathe in and exhale all chaos, confusion, and self-doubt. A second time, breathe in and exhale all chaos, all confusion, all self-doubt. Thank you. I hope you find that helpful. And there are more practices like that in learning to be. All right. Well, we can't wait to get the books. We'll have them here for you uh, in the back. So let us know. And uh, Dr. Juanita, and I call you that because I, you do um, walk in that, um, that title uh, with what you've given us today and sharing of yourself. I pray God's richest blessings upon you and that you, you would enjoy your children where you are. Thank you for joining us here at the conference. My pleasure.